Arthritis is not just joint pain. Repeat it with me. Arthritis is not just joint pain. If you're wondering how so, you'll need to stop and go listen to the episode that I did with Cheryl Crow. That episode can be found at otforlife.com slash 66 or on your favorite podcast player. And if you've already listened to the episode, then stay tuned for a short recap about my takeaways from my chat with Cheryl. If you're interested in occupational therapy, this is the place for you. This show aims to explore our profession by sharing who we are and what we do. Because for us, occupational therapy is more than just a job. Hi, I'm Sarah. Welcome to OT for Life. I had so many takeaways from my conversation with Cheryl. To be honest, it was a bit of a challenge for me to sit down and consolidate my thoughts about everything that I had thought about and reflected on during our conversation and then afterwards as well. So I wanted to take a couple minutes and discuss a few of the things that really stood out to me from this episode. First off, the diagnosis journey. In my conversation with Cheryl, I learned that getting a diagnosis of arthritis and specifically a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is a really lengthy process and it can take many years. Cheryl said that the average length that it takes to make a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is about four years, which means for some people it can take even longer than that. What also really stood out to me is that oftentimes throughout the diagnosis journey, the test results are either overlooked or a lot of them can seem as normal unless the doctors are specifically testing for rheumatoid arthritis. Cheryl shared so many doctor visits and so many appointments that she had where the doctors just said everything's fine or you're just anxious or any other kind of excuse, but there was no, in the, at least in the beginning, there was no evidence that there was anything going wrong with her besides for the symptoms that she was having. And it took her so many years and seeing so many specialists in order to finally get her diagnosis. And the big thing that stood out to me in how she finally got her diagnosis and finally got the correct diagnosis was how she happened to use the right words to describe what was going on. And that was what clued her doctor in into testing for rheumatoid arthritis and then ultimately leading to her diagnosis. And for her, the right words was that at one point during her diagnosis journey, she mentioned that it felt like she had hot glue in her joints. And based on Cheryl's experience and then based on what she has seen since then in talking with so many other people who also have rheumatoid arthritis, is that using the words hot glue and using these words to really clue the doctors into what is going on within their bodies is so important in getting the correct diagnosis. And then once they get the correct diagnosis, being able to discuss a plan of care and also look into treatment possibilities. So the big thing that I learned in regards to the diagnosis journey is that there are so many hurdles and so many hoops that people and patients have to go through in order to first just get the correct and the official diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so my next takeaway has to do with joint pain. And like I like I said at the beginning of this episode, and even in the title of my episode with Cheryl, arthritis is so much more than just joint pain. But so many times, that is the maybe the initial things that doctors or clinicians will look at, but that there are so many other things that play a pivotal role within this diagnosis. I remember at one point in the episode, Cheryl started talking about how she had pain in one of her fingers. But then she quickly commented that that was the least of her worries. And there were so many other things that were happening within her daily life that was having a big impact on her occupations, on her meaningful activities, and on her ability to engage on her day-to-day -day roles and tasks. Cheryl highlighted that having a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, some of the other symptoms that can play a role are anxiety. And she talked about this a lot, that 
Right in the beginning, she was diagnosed with anxiety before she even had the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. And then there were kind of all these other things that would also play a role, such as like fatigue and how the anxiety and how the fatigue and how some of these other symptoms started to have implications on her occupations and on her ability to participate in her everyday life. And we all know as occupational therapy practitioners, the importance of being able to engage in the activities that bring meaning to our life, to be able to engage in the things that are purposeful and the things that we need and want to be able to do every single day. And when there are limitations, whether it is because of pain, whether it is because of fatigue, whether it is because of anxiety or anything else, it ultimately impacts everything that we do. And then when we are unable to continue to engage in the things that bring meaning to our life, our mental health will be greatly impacted. And thus, a vicious cycle of negative symptoms interfering with the way that we are able to participate in our daily occupations, and then our mental health beginning to spiral, it is just a recipe for disaster spans way beyond just that initial joint pain. The last takeaway that I had from this episode was realizing the importance for us as occupational therapy practitioners to think outside the box. And honestly, this is exactly what we do as OT practitioners anyway. But it really highlighted to me how much that we need to continue to keep this outside the box thinking on the forefront of our mind and not be afraid to utilize it in our treatments and for our clients to really address their needs, address their goals, and be able to help them live the lives that they want to. There are so many creative ways to adapt activities or modify activities so that people can engage in the tasks that bring meaning to their life. And one of the big things that made me reflect on this in the episode and actually in my own life as well was that it's not just about refraining from activities that cause pain. I know in the episode, I told the story of my mom who has osteoarthritis and how when she was initially going through getting the diagnosis and seeking out some treatment for it, how her doctors basically just told her to stop doing the things that caused her pain. And when I first heard about that, it really just struck me. It hit me hard because we know how important it is for people and for our clients to be able to do the things that they want to be able to do. And like I just mentioned, when you're not able to do the things that you want to do, how much of an impact that can have on your life in general. So I knew that just stopping from doing things that cause pain was actually going to have a greater impact and a greater implications for mental health and for my mom's life moving forward. And then I also remembered a story from when I was a student. Now, I don't have a lot of experience working with people who have been diagnosed with arthritis, but I do remember a client that I had when I was a level two student. And this client had come in and she was a waitress and she had just been referred for hand therapy because she was experiencing some arthritis in her hands. And Basically, it was the same thing that happened with my mom, where her doctor pretty much just told her that she's going to have to stop being a waitress because of the pain in her hands and because of the arthritis. And I remember the day that she came in to the facility and she was just completely down and she was defeated. She had not been able to work for the past couple weeks. And she was also worried that because of what her doctor had said, that she wouldn't actually be able to ever get back to working as a waitress. And being a waitress was her livelihood. It was something that she was passionate about, and it was something that brought meaning and purpose to her life. She wanted to be able to continue to be a waitress. So I remember spending a couple of sessions with her, discussing lots of education about joint protection, as well as addressing some of the other kind of common areas, including her pain, range of motion, and strength. And then, this day, I also remember her so well. She came in for her appointment, and literally her smile lit up the room. She could not wait to tell me that she had worked the night before, and she had no pain during her shift. She was elated. She was over the moon 
because she had finally, she had been dealing with this for months and for years, and she had finally been able to figure out some ways to decrease the pain and decrease some of the negative symptoms that were happening to be able to participate in her job, to participate in the activities that bring so much joy to her life. I'll never know exactly the impact that I had on her life, but I do know that that day she was so happy. She was so happy to be able to get back to doing something that was meaningful, despite many professionals telling her that she was never going to be able to do it again. And I know that my experience with her has forever shaped me as a practitioner in really thinking outside the box for my clients and getting them to be able to do what they want and need to do within their day. So just to recap, my takeaways from the episode about arthritis with Cheryl Crow. First, getting the diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis is a journey. It's a marathon. It is not a sprint. Second, arthritis is not, I repeat, not just joint pain. And number three, that we as occupational therapy practitioners need to think outside the box when working with people with arthritis. Thanks for listening to today's episode. A big, big, big thank you goes out to Cheryl Crow for coming on the show and sharing her journey and passion for arthritis. If you want to hear the full interview with Cheryl, check out episode 66 titled, It's Not Just Joint Pain, Occupational Therapy's Unique Role in Arthritis Life. You can find it on my website at otforlife.com slash 66 or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, do you have any of your own takeaways from this episode? If so, scroll on over to otforlife.com slash community and there's a topic box just for this episode. I'd love to know if you have any questions, any comments, any thoughts, any reflections, anything at all about this episode or about working with clients with rheumatoid arthritis or arthritis in general. So head on over there. There'll be a link to the community page, as well as a link to anything that I discussed in this episode in the show notes. And one more thing before you go, I have two amazing episodes coming up next. My next interview episode, I cannot wait to share with you, as well as I have a brand new, super fun episode coming your way. That's a little different, but it's going to be one that you don't want to miss. As always, I appreciate you being here and tuning in to the episode. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you hear, here are three easy ways you can help support the show. One, head over to otforlife.com to find out more about any resources discussed on the show. Remember, that's OT, the number four, L-Y-F-E dot com. Two, share the podcast with a friend, colleague, or anyone interested in occupational therapy. Three, subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast player so you don't miss out on any upcoming episode. And while you're there, be sure to leave a review saying how much you love the show. Thanks again. I'll catch you next time, OT for Lifers. First.